Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole podcast. I'm Danny Vega, joined today by my lovely co host with the co most lovely, lovable, and eggs <laughs> Benedicti. Oh, my God. Sarah Levine. In the flesh, everyone. We're live. Yes. It's weird. I'm like looking at Sarah it's and really it's like, weird. it's almost too much. It's I like know. I'm like, don't make eye contact. I got to look out the window. Do we used to sit and look at each other the whole time? No, because I think we used to sit next to each other at your table, at like a round table. So it wasn't oh, so like we would, yeah, we a kinda... huge, like, it wasn't like as confrontational <laughs> feeling of a format. Yeah, we're not fighting. Nothing no, no, bad no, is not. happening. We are we're primal. We're looking directly at each other. And I haven't done that with another person in a long time. Yeah, it's like <laughs> our fight or flight is being engaged yeah. and we just have to tell our brains like stay podcast, yeah. fight, flight or podcast. Yeah. Those are the three primal yes, instincts. Completely. It's like when you don't look a dog directly in the eyes because it gets scared. Right, right. <laughs> and you better not look at him. Otherwise, you and a dog are going to start a podcast. <laughs> I would listen to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we got to start with juice per use. Yes. We, we, we brunched. That was juicy. We brunched. That was fun. We looked at a lot of cute dogs. A lot of big dogs, some big horse dogs. dogs out there. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, fun brunch. Um, um, I mean, I have decided on grad school. I am going to Columbia. <sighs> Congrats. Thank How you. exciting. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm Are, quite nervous, but I think it'll be cool. And if it's not, I just tell myself. It's not a blood oath. I can just drop out. And you're expressing anxiety because one aspect oh. is you'll have to interview people on the street. Oh, big time. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely scared about that. Like, yeah. I feel like I have to hype myself up to make a dentist appointment. So, right. yes, I'm definitely scared about that. Um, especially because I may or may not have any say in like where I'm geographically assigned to interview people. So I'm just like, Oh my God, if I have to go to some random like neighborhood that I'm not familiar with, yeah, that's going to be uncomfortable. However, I've in my head, I'm already thinking of like, <laughs> like bits where I can somehow try to make this work. Yeah. I don't know. Comedians do that shit all the time. I'm like, how do you guys do it? You stop people on the street all the time. Or like I'm walking here. I think that's a little bit more fun than me being like, so how do you feel your neighborhood is gentrified? <laughs> that is a little, yeah, that's a little dark, less fun, but whatever. We'll see. You know, the cool thing about uh, going up to people is that it does feel very intense and the rejection can hurt um, yep. when they say no. But oh, eventually yeah, like us walking past the ASPCA volunteers today. Oh, brutal. Now, barking you, is the worst. The, you know what? Honestly, though, is a thing with that kind of stuff where I, I kind of entertained someone for a very long time because I don't know, I was too nice. I didn't have anywhere to be. And I was like, oh, OK, this is great. Like, can you just send me a link? And they were pressuring me to, like, sign up to sponsor a child like on the street. And oh I was like, God. I don't know anything about your organization. Like, I'm not going to do this. This is just a bad business model. I don't think anyone is going to sign up for like an organization they don't know. I think you're I think you're wrong though. Really? I agree with people you. do it? They must. They're always I mean, out there. You're right. People are doing it. I at least the ASPCA I've heard of, but this like random I want to say save the children, but I'm just making that up. But I was just like, this is a this is a lot to ask of someone where I'm coming in with literally zero knowledge. <laughs> Well, it was weird. I, I was approached by this guy and he goes, I'm Stu and I'm a candidate for mayor or whatever. I don't even remember. Okay. And we have a lot of mayoral candidates, so it could I think really it was mayor. Anyone. I yeah. think it was mayor and he was nice and and he's like, I'm, you know, public servant or whatever. And I was like, Great, you seem cool. I'm in. I'll sign your thing. Okay. And then uh his guy called me, his like campaign manager called me. And I was like, you know, I like you guys. You're clearly putting in a lot of effort. I'll donate to the campaign. And this was kind of well, crazy. Then it never ends. Well, I said, well, I wanted it to end. That was my yeah, goal. Yeah. I was like, listen, I'm going to donate and then I'm going to go. Right. And uh, these are the boundaries. <laughs> and this is crazy, though. I donated 25 bucks and he goes, thank you. That will actually be $200 that that Stu is able to spend. So there's like a thing. Oh, like a matching? There's like a matching 8X match to cool. help little candidates compete. I thought that was kind of crazy. I was like, where else can I give yeah. and have that much impact? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Sometimes Planned Parenthood will match my donations. Every so often, I'm like, I'll give you guys more money. I think I would donate to them monthly. I don't even know. Yeah. But then the problem is that then they never stop fucking emailing they never you. Stop. I feel like I donate like monthly to a number of organizations and they're always just like, Hey, you donate, let's say like $25. Can you make it 30? And then it just like never fucking ends. And I'm right. like, and they're sending me 
mailings. Piles of mailings. So much mail to an organization. I'm like, guys, I'm already on board. Like, send this to somebody else. Right. Stop sending paper. I was and reading on Reddit it's today. so wasteful. Okay, I guess in like Denmark or some European country, default default nobody gets any spam that's the what? rule i'm moving you have to opt in and who then the fuck would opt in to spam of course nobody <gasps> oh my god what a utopia right <laughs> oh shit because it's like it's annoying it's all that wasted paper oh it's... yeah i think there's some kind of tax break on this postage but i'm just like oh it's not worth it just send me an email but also you know what is crazy because i'm reading about like nfts and cryptocurrency and apparently this shit takes so much energy that i'm like how did we make fake money worse for the environment than printing actual money like it's insane yeah. i don't i don't know is, it, is that true that it's worse than cash i guess so um, cash doesn't take any electricity I, unless it's printed right i didn't like i read this new york times article about how bad like cryptocurrencies are yeah i didn't real. they didn't say like in relation to printing actual money but it i think it said it uses more money than like or more energy than like the country, like all of Argentina uses or something like well, that. Well, Argentina, I, don't know. I mean, who like, cares? That's a country. No, I, I think it's a valid Kinda objection. Nuts. I think, I think if you're comparing it to uh, cash, it's a little unfair because it's like, this is much more powerful than cash. You know, this is a currency that anyone can have and anyone, you could trade yeah. with anyone in the world. That's like sort of not yeah. possible with with cash and then nobody controls it. There's all these aspects of cryptocurrency and you know, it's yeah. like you could make a similar argument about internet, computers, smartphones, all these things require power, Oh, totally. but they've transformed our lives. I, I think it's a, it's a decent objection because it sets the stage for cryptocurrency that will require less power which is a good thing yeah it should but i think when people kind of blow it out to be like oh well, bitcoin's evil because it's bad for the environment it's like okay did you drive here in a car buddy like <laughs> you know yeah even just like oh are you buying something you don't need congrats yes. that's bad for the environment everything is bad for yeah the no it's just i don't know that that kind of blows my mind and there's nfts i'm like i'm not even gonna bother figuring out what the fuck that is yeah, well, this is this is my day job to discuss these things. <laughs> um, I mean, look, people, just be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Be very careful. The market is hot right now. When mm. the market's hot, you got to be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, that. definitely. All right, we're going to play a little bit of Guess the Verdict. I'll start us off here. AITA for telling my fiance to clean the house more often. I mean, ugh, I know your trickery. Yes. But this could be anything. This could be anything. This could be anything from like she sits on her ass all day to like she literally does everything. Or that one guy who was like the the wife had literally just given birth like two hours before or something like right, that. Right, right. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, this is tough. I'm gonna go with Ugh, I'm just going to go with NTA. NTA is wrong. Ugh. In fact, you said it. It was the very first thing you said. She sits on her ass all day. No. Uh, I couldn't. I was like, wait, so then how is he not the asshole? NTA, because she told him. Oh, I thought OP was telling the wife to clean up more. Uh, yeah, no. AITA for telling my fiance to clean the house more. Yeah, she wants him to clean more. She wants a 50-50 split. Oh, okay. Okay, well, so I was kind of right about the situation, but I interpreted who was you telling took it, who yeah. more. Damn it. That's yeah, I guess you were right. Yeah. So fiance only cleans on the weekends since he works and pays the bills. He also works 12-hour days, so I'm like, That's good lord. Rough. He works his ass off. OP says she has personal projects, which she says like include working out and like Same. some kind of art or something. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and yeah, she wants to split 50 50, whereas he thinks she should be doing more. Seems kind of fair. She doesn't have like a full time job. No, she has no job. She brings in no income. It doesn't seem fair to split 50 50. No. Maybe like I can give you 70 yeah, 30 or gonna like 70 30 seems fair. You know, I mean, I guess I start to wonder too about the messes being created and stuff, but it's like there needs to be some concept of fairness. If he's paying yeah. for the house, he's paying all the bills and you're yeah. just chilling. No, come on. It's kind of a dream relationship, but like, no, come on. It's like, I mean, even, and then she doesn't have any kind of a crunch time. If I'm like, all right, your novel needs to be published next week. Fine. Then maybe we make an exception or yeah. whatever for a month, but Novel, yeah, it's not a fair dynamic. Where's your sense of fairness? No. I mean, what is she bringing to this? Right. No, I don't know. 
That's weird. Okay. A-I-T-A for suggesting my wife take our kids strawberry picking when she's allergic to strawberries. Well, why would that make you the asshole? That's a weird suggestion. It seems almost dangerous. <laughs> it's so dangerous, I'm going to have to assume YTA. You are wrong. So ah! here's the deal. So OP is an ICU note nurse who works 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and on weekends. So 6 a.m. to 6 oh, no, p.m. No, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then on weekends, OP is really tired. OK, the wife is allergic to strawberries, but really only if she eats them. She can hold them and touch them and everything like that. Also, her allergy is not life threatening. She just gets a rash and she can take Benadryl. The kids really are cooped up all day. They really want to go to this strawberry patch for some reason. And OP is basically just <laughs> suggesting that the wife take them. Well, the wife said, so the OP writes, she told me I was being a dick and trying to kill her. And if I cared about her at all, I wouldn't try to get her to do this. And then she hasn't returned his calls since. So, I mean, the first, the first comment, the top comment was like sort of an info, but cause it was really like, is berry picking really the only outdoor activity that the kids can do? Like just take them to a park. But so then I had to scroll very far down. I'm still scrolling. And the top comment was NTA. Um, your kids really want to go and there's no real reason your wife can't take them. She doesn't have to eat strawberries if they go strawberry picking. Um, also OP kind of says in the comments that the wife just doesn't want to take the kids outside anywhere and is just really like mentally checked out parenting wise. So rough situation. Rough sitch. I mean, also brutal, brutal for your partner to be occupied 12 hours a day, five days a week. And the ICU, no less. So there's like an emotional labor aspect to that as yeah. well. Yeah. I feel like it's like cortisol pumping all times. Right. Like, like, what's the bet? Hey, how was your day at the ICU? Well, no one's dead today. Yeah. Many are dying, but no one actually yeah. died today. Oh, it's my gosh. And so in a tough. pandemic, I'm sure that's really rough. So tough, tough situation. I mean, I guess I would say I, I am kind of on board for the info there because I'm like, yeah, the info is clutch because it's like, why are you set on the strawberry patch? Right. Like, why can't she just take them to do anything else? But apparently, like, she won't go anywhere outside. Like, she doesn't do anything. Well, because, yeah, like, it's a little bit torturous, if nothing else, to be surrounded by, I mean, first of all, obviously. Strawberries are amazing. The strawberry patch obviously slaps. The kids yeah. want to go. I've never <laughs> even slaps. heard. Like, it's getting hyped. I, yeah, I want to go this now. This is a hell of a patch. Oh, yeah, you it's know? a great place. And then she's got to be there the whole day looking at these fat fucking strawberries. <laughs> uh, that she can't eat. Sucks. Sucks. All right. This, this Sarah, you're going to hate me for this. Yeah. Would I be the asshole if I don't drop the chargers? What does that even mean? Nobody knows. Drop the chargers? <laughs> I hate you for this. I knew this was evil. Drop the chargers. I'm going to go with like not the asshole. I feel like there's some weird dumb agreement that OP agreed to. That doesn't uh, make any sense. Not the asshole is 100% correct. Oh! Now, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here because nobody did it in the comments, but OP repeatedly uses the term chargers repeatedly three or four times in the post okay. to mean charges. That's it. It's about not dropping the charges against, well, who else would it be? There. Husband? Crazy X. Crazy X. Wait, I think I read this one as I was scrolling the page. I didn't even pick up on the typo. Yeah, so the crazy X, it started <laughs> oh, with them being harassed on social, so they Excellent. blocked on all the socials, classic. Then the X escalates. The problem, oh. OP had installed cameras. Hmm. X did some tire slashing, etc. And then OP is wondering if they should drop the charges because I guess their ex works with kids and then the family, uh, ex's family yeah, is on them. All the more them. reason to know, right? not have that person work with kids. So yeah, and then the, this whole time OP is using the term chargers. We don't, oh my God, must be a, a bad autocorrect. Wow, right? okay, that's fun. AITA for telling my students the real reason why they take so many standardized tests. Uh, I say no assholes here. You would think that. Mother effer. Am I about to lose? Uh, uh. Okay. OP teaches eighth grade and like there's just a lot of standardized tests. So sure. one of the kids asked, why the hell do we take so many tests? 
OP was like, watch your language, but then said, do you really want to know? The class said yes. So OP basically said it's a state policy requirement. Their evaluation counts on teacher evaluations and the state wants to monitor the growth. Like, obviously, this is the reason we take tests. Um, apparently one of, o so this is the only reason why it's not no assholes here because okay. one of OP's coworkers was telling the kids that they take standardized tests because the teachers decided to do it because they thought it was best for the kids. So then the ki those that other class found out that OP's class got the truth and they confronted the teacher like, why are you lying to us? And then that other teacher is mad and saying that OP needs to apologize because um, OP caused that teacher to lose control of their class. So what? Wait, what? the other teacher lied, though, or yeah. OP lied? No, the other teacher lied and basically is now being defensive. And oh, so it's not OP the apologize. asshole and that teacher, and that teacher is. is. Ah, yes. Exactly. Got me. Well, I think that's it. All right. Well, Sarah won guess the verdict. Yeah. Big ups to our new patron, Brad. Welcome to the Patreon. Yes. Guys, we are adding um, new features on the Patreon. We are doing yes. a bi-weekly happy hour now. Uh, we also have a new WhatsApp chat that you get access to. We're we're bantering. We're riffing. You it's know, fun. We're sending memes. We're sending memes. It's a great time. We'd love to have you on there. Please join us. It's a lot of fun. Um, only five buckos a month. And, uh, you know, if we keep... We're, I'm ready to do weekly happy hours, and Sarah's going to pop in when she can, but... Woo. Uh, I'm developing new games that we oh, played during the yeah. happy hour. I, I was I was bouncing one off Sarah, so uh, it's really it's really a cool thing, and I'm determined to give everyone their money's worth. I'm yes. like, you could be on Netflix for fifteen. You could be on what True. Spotify, ten bucks a month. Yeah, I don't even know. You know? I just I just do the commercials and suffer through. Let's see. You want to pay ten dollars <laughs> for all the music that's ever been released ever. Yeah. Or five dollars for me to scream yeah, at you. Exactly. I don't know what you. I mean, it's a really tough call. <laughs> I'll go with the screaming. Uh, yeah. Well, you might spend ten dollars to visit an exclusive strawberry patch. So we, we can try to compete with no, that. I do want to go. <laughs> um. I also had another thing to shout out to. Somebody requested a clean episode. Yes, family, family friendly. friendly. It's gonna be hard for me. I'm not gonna lie. I curse a lot. My dad hates it. We're we're gonna do it. But we we're are, gonna we do have it. it. Yes, we have it on the books, and by that I mean in Google Docs. Yes, and we've been talking about it. Unfortunately, dirty stuff keeps coming up. This is a it's this is a, too urgent. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> this is a bit of a dirty episode as we're revisiting an extremely juicy situation that we have even dug into on the Patreon. Our second story of the day, AITA for not telling the couple I slept with about my genetic disability. Wait, I don't think we did this one on the Patreon. Well, we caught, no, 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 not on an episode. We covered it at, on the virtual oh, yeah, happy, the happy hour. hour. Yes. And I was absolutely struck because we probably discussed it for 45 minutes. We were talking about Holy it for so shit. long. <laughs> I actually felt like I was OP. I was like, I can't believe I got this woman pregnant and I have a genetic disability. <laughs> And people kept making new points. So I'm not even going to claim that we've solved this situation because it is very I complex. I actually have a pretty, in my head, I have some, a pretty clear thing of what I think. But now let's see how it goes. It's, it's a wild one. But first, we're going to start off with AITA for holding a grudge against the friend who outed me as Polly, even though he thought... He was doing good. Yeah, this episode is like NSFW, <laughs> like yeah. definitely the opposite of a family friendly app. I'm Polly Amorous. My wife, Lisa, has a boyfriend, Jeff, and I have a girlfriend, Natalie. OK, the four of us hang out together. We're all consenting, but I don't advertise that I'm anything other than traditional monogamous with my and Lisa's friends. Enter Kevin, a not so close friend of Lisa's who's happened to see me out with Natalie around two years ago. He assumed that I was cheating on my wife, fair, and tried to write that quote unquote wrong. If he'd just gone to Lisa and said it to her, she'd have clarified the misunderstanding. No harm done. Instead, he talked in private with several of my friends to gather evidence on me. Every time he told our friends that I'm a cheater, low life monster, etc., one friend was approached on FB Messenger and screen capped Kevin's convo. Kevin said, I quote, help me take down that effing bastard. Damn. Then Kevin finally heard from Lisa that she approved of my relationship with Natalie, and I was forced to come out as Polly publicly to shush the rumors that I'm a dirtbag cheater. Thanks, Kevin. I've been clear. If Kevin is invited anywhere, I'm not going. I hate his guts. I've been the butt of every joke and called a cuck a hundred times since everyone knows that my wife has a BF. 
Kevin demonstrated genuine hatred for me. I refuse to ever consider him a friend again, even though Lisa insists that Kevin, quote unquote, thought he was doing the right thing. I refuse to give the dude another chance. A-I-T-A. This is like interesting. Yeah, this is uh, this is controversial. Yeah, because I feel like from OP, like I'm totally on board with OP's perception because this guy acted like a monster. But then you have to consider the other side where it's like, well, what are you supposed to do if you suspect that your friend's spouse is cheating? Well, like, wouldn't we all gather evidence? We would gather evidence. We would ask questions. Yeah. Um, and I guess they're not really that good. friends. Because, like, if it was my good friend, I'd be like, look, bitch, <laughs> your man is cheating on you. But, like, he said they're not really that close. So I feel like it makes sense why he wouldn't just go directly to her to be like, your well, husband's a dirtbag. I think we've talked about this before, though. The move is not to go, not to go to the victim of the cheating. Yeah. The move is to go to him. Oh, and say, hey, what are you doing? I saw this. What are you doing? Interesting. It looks to me like you're cheating. But then don't you think that that would just make the person like cover up their lies better if they are cheating? The thing is, it's none of your business. I guess that's true. But then I'm just like, who are who is that ultimately helping if you go to the person who's cheating to be like, I know you're cheating. Like then you're, you're either like, maybe they'll come clean. Maybe you'll kind of put the, them in this like emotionally blackmail situation where you give them a deadline to tell or you tell, or they're just going to get better at covering up their lies. And then you kind of can go off thinking you helped when you didn't. The, the thing is, Sarah, I feel like there's two kinds of cheaters. Okay. You know, there's like a sociopath and the sociopath. You're right. If you go to the person who's not going to feel nothing, they're just going to cover their tracks better. I don't think that's very common. Well, I guess if he's out on a date with this woman, I feel like that and like edges more towards like a sociopathic cheater. That's crazy. You're not just like, oh, meeting up at night, like you're out on a date. Like, yes. I, I kind of think that's a fair. Something's going on, right? You're asking yeah. to be caught. Yeah. You know, you go to the person. I think the majority of the time they're going to be caught with guilt. They're going to be like, I got caught. And I think they're going to eat it. You know, and you did your part, right? Like, this isn't your case. This isn't mm -hmm. your trial to raise. I think you can, I think it's perfectly valid to say, hey, you know, if you don't address this, uh, I saw you kiss her, you know, I'm going to tell your wife and I go, oh, I'm Polly. So go ahead, tell her. She already knows. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't even know that I'm on board that like you should go to the cheater because I, I don't really know if I think that ultimately helps anyone. I think we've, we have precedent on this, that that's the best move to go. I feel like we've talked about this, but like, I can't remember what frame of mind I would have been in to like agree to that because wow. like if my friend's boyfriend was cheating on her, I yes. wouldn't go to him. I would not go to him and be like, I know what you're doing. I would go to her and be like, listen, I have stacks on stacks of receipts. And like, you should see know. the danger though, is that you think your friend is going to go, thank you so much. No, Sarah. she's not. She would be mad she, at me and she'd exactly. be in denial. But then like, ultimately exactly. it's her. I think it's her, what's the word? I don't know, like her right to like do with the information what she wants. Well, but that's the thing is that why, why have that thing where she's mad at you instead? You just contact the boyfriend and go, hey. I, I think that's the right thing to do. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you, if you tell someone that something they don't want to hear, like they're going to be mad at you, but that's just, but they're not really mad at you. Like they're just, they're mad and they're upset and like you're the object of that. But I feel like they may get over it especially if they realize that you're right. I, I think the reason though, that we previously had agreed on this is because it's just, there's a lot of advantages to going to the cheater and you say, I know you cheated. You should be the person to break this news. You should be the person to tell them you did this. You should take ownership over this. And if you don't, I want to do it for you, but I'm giving you the opportunity. Uh, I think that's I a guess. much cleaner break. It's much smoother. I guess. I don't know. I, I it's feel ruined like I would friendships. just go to the person. No, but it's ruined friendships. I mean, but don't you feel like after the person realized that they did cheat and broke up, they would maybe like reconcile? Yes, maybe. But yeah. then you got all this grief in between you and them. And ultimately, it's none of your business. They didn't do nothing to you. So you're just, you're ratting, you're a rat, you know, it's like, and I'm not saying you shouldn't I mean, shouldn't you can't rat. say it's none of my business if you're then going to go and like, act upon the knowledge like you don't get to really play both sides like that well i'm saying it's why would you intervene directly in between their relationship you know it's like go to the person and be like hey i know what you did 
This is your relationship and that's not okay. And you know, it's not okay. And if you don't do anything about this, then I'm going to do something about it. I don't know. I think that's kind of like dicey just because then it's like, it depends how good the friend is because then if the friend knows that you knew and didn't say anything like that could also be a source of Mm, a lot of grief. So there, I don't know. There's no like good approach. I don't think I feel like it's very situational depending on like your relationship with the people <sighs> you're right you're right Woo! let's read some comments this is not let's clear go. to me pamela c i feel like the way he went about it was wrong but if he was friends with your wife and you were in a traditional monog i could see why he wouldn't want to bring it to her without hard evidence even if he knew what he was seeing Ariana M. Yeah, I mean, a, the not liking him or giving Kevin another chance doesn't make you an asshole. And as a poly person, I know it's not always a right time place to come out. But also, who the F cares if people call you a cuck? Well, that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to be called a cuck, except the cuckoo bird. Your relationship <laughs> is stable and good, and they aren't in it. F Kevin, sure, but why are you letting other people's opinions on your relationship bother you? I mean, because yeah. nobody likes, to, nobody likes I mean, to be judged. The thing is, like... I. I don't feel like Kevin's necess- like approach was necessarily wrong, but I do feel like he is taking it like he's not just making it like, oh, I'm going to help my friend. Like, it, I don't know. I feel like he's making it weirdly personal, like take down that effing bastard. And like, what else did he say? It feels vindictive. It does feel vindictive. It feels personal. And it doesn't just feel like I came upon this information and I'm doing the right thing. Like it, if they really aren't that close, let's see. Yeah, Kevin is a not so close friend of Lisa's. So then it's like, well, then why are you gunning so hard for this guy? Like, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Why doesn't and why doesn't he just go? I mean, okay. so we went back and forth on going straight to the person. That almost seems better than like going around and telling other people. Yeah, I do think it seems better, but I feel like from his perspective, I get why he would do that. But I, yeah, I don't know where I'm coming for. Kevin is just him. Like, I don't know, just acting like he has a personal vendetta against OP when it really should just be like, like, the I don't know, the fact that he feels emotionally invested when he is apparently not such a good friend of Lisa's makes me feel like this is not really about doing the right thing. This is about, like, breaking up the relationship. It's crazy. Yeah. He's a, and he took it to a weirdly personal place. Weirdly personal. I don't understand it. Nico I mean, S. I do. I think he has the hots for Lisa. Oh. That's what I think. Interesting. Okay, that's a good theory. Ed D, you lost me at not wanting to out yourself, but you still went on a romantic date with a woman that's not your wife. You can't hide the cake and eat it too. Ooh, I kind of like that. <laughs> the frosting on your lips gave it all away. I'm going to say YTA for... <laughs> um, bad metaphor is too much. Yeah, YTA <laughs> for putting yourself in an outable situation. Nikki C, I'm going to say ESH, you put yourself in that position going out and being seen with Natalie and Kevin probably thought he was doing the right thing. He went about it in all the wrong ways. He should have just spoken to Lisa, especially with him being her friend. Okay, what I'm just wondering, though, is after this, this is crucial info where it's like, has Kevin ever apologized? Like, what's the deal? Did they ever have an actual confrontation? Yes. Hey, hey man, you really ruined, like, you, you know, you kind of threw a wrench in my life. You outed me, yeah, you judged like, me, I know what you said. I don't, I just don't see what is OP's crime. What is OP's crime? He didn't do nothing. I mean, I, yeah, I guess it's his right based on the situation to not want to um, hang out with this guy. Yes, and what? He wasn't cheating. He wasn't yeah. doing anything wrong. And they didn't want right. to say that they were poly. So he went out with, the, he went out with Natalie or whatever. Right. and. That doesn't make him a bad person. That no, means but I do think it's a little, like, I don't know, naive. Sure, naive. Yeah. I mean, this is something that he should have predicted would have happened. I mean, yeah. hasn't he seen a sitcom? Of course right. this is Come on, happen. a single one? <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't think he's, like, wrong for not wanting to hang out with Kevin. Um, but I, I can kind of see, like, other people's sides of trying to see it from... Kevin's perspective, which is that he thought he was doing, going about it the right way with like limited info. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, top Reddit comment is sounds like Kevin has a thing for your wife. There you go, Sarah. Ooh. He was trying to break you guys up so he could swoop in and be the hero. He's upset that not only do you have a GF, but that she has a BF and it's not him. He is toxic and you have every right to not want him in your life at all. I don't know if I'm ready to go that far. Yeah, I don't 
know if I would go that far, but I also kind of feel like if he's not a close friend, then like what is really the skin off your back? I just don't get why, yeah, he has such anger. Help me. But take then down like that Lisa bastard. seems to defend Kevin. So then, you know, are they good friends? What's the deal? Yeah, Lisa insists that Kevin thought he was doing the right thing. So she's standing up for him. So I guess I'm curious how good friends they are. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the wrong... I, I think what Kevin did was he made OP, he outed OP, which I can't blame him for the outing, exactly. I blame him more for the harsh rhetoric. Totally. But then again, it's like, it's not that harsh. A cheater is a cheater. Nobody likes a cheater. Yeah, it's true. <sighs> yeah, but know. like, take down that bastard sounds like, this is not a movie. Like, what is what is this line? Like, that's I true. don't know, it's weird. It's aggressive. It's weird. It sounds like it's a plot. It's not. You know? <laughs> yeah. AITA for holding a grudge against a friend who outed me as Polly, even though he thought he was doing good. I guess on the on a very literal title level, I would say I guess I want to say NTA and soft YTA toward Kevin, but then I don't what do we have on Kevin? I don't feel like I have enough. I don't have enough info on Kevin. I mean, <laughs> I have my conspiracy theories. He thought he was doing the right thing. Maybe he does secretly love the wife, right. but like that doesn't make him a bad person. He called him a bastard, but like, come on, that's not that bad. Yeah, I feel like I've called myself worse things. Absolutely. <laughs> like, whatever. I think I, I think I gotta go. No assholes here. Is that what we're doing? I kind of feel like you seem really unsure about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I feel like that's the answer because in the end, like we did agree that it was stupid and naive for right. him to go out with Natalie, and this was a sitcomish situation that ended ugly, but because now everyone knows they're Polly and that yeah. people are calling him a cuck. That's not on Kevin either, though. That's on them. That's, That's on like people, the other people dropping yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like when you have the benefit of knowing all the information, it's easier to make a judgment. But he was making a judgment with half the information. Yep. And I guess based on the decisions with the information that he had, I guess I could say no assholes here as well. No assholes Ooh. here. It is. All right. Crazy. We're going to play a little round of assholes at brunch. That's Woo, fun. That's us. That's <laughs> us. Uh, the guy who's like, uh, ah, they didn't bring me my creamer. I want I want them to take this coffee off the bill. But then I drank it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. The girls who were just like wasted and, and harassing the server for more mimosa pitchers. Oh, my God. It's 12.30 p.m., guys. <laughs> yeah. Can we slow Relax. our rolls? Relax. The people who have a horse dog that weighs like 200 pounds in New York <laughs> City, do you have a, appropriate apartment size for the animal? I'm always curious. Oh, my gosh. What about just the person who orders a salad? It's fucking brunch. Come on. Get some eggs or pancakes and grow up. Live a little. Yeah, yeah live a it's little. It's childish to get a salad at this Ugh. hour. Oh, my God. Freak. It makes me hungry looking at someone ordering a salad. I get okay. Let me put this as the restaurant owner, like <laughs> where COVID's over, and he's like, actually, uh, this makes everything really easy for me. And there's no table service now. You just order at the front, and it feels everything feels like a walk up. Everything feels like Chipotle. There's just no more service. There could COVID be service. Is not over yet. It's technically over. I feel like July first is when the city's opening up. Okay, which I'm I guess very that's fair. About. Um. Okay. Other assholes at brunch. Oh my god. I'm only thinking of drunk people, which is bad. I feel like do another brunch. Oh my person. god. I mean the the drunk people who fucking knock over glasses. Oh my god. I hate that glass. You know what? I say criminalized glass. Glassware. Yeah, I hate it. It's I always insane. break it. One time I cut myself so badly on on like a broken glass as I was taking out the garbage that I needed to get stitches. Just forget glass. I hate it. What about the guy who popularized glass? I'll come for him. <laughs> hey, Let's you know what would be good? Let's all drink out of very thin weaponry. Let's do that. <laughs> Love, and it's very fragile. <laughs> Super fragile. Um, what about the places that charge you like $13 for a, a mimosa in like a champagne flute? That is criminal. Uh. That is criminal. I could buy a bottle of very shitty sparkling wine for that much money. Or the places that are like unlimited mimosas within the service is all slow. It's like, I've yeah, had two get mimosas. One. Yeah. You literally get I'm one so and then angry. they kick you out. Yeah. First. What about the uh, the guy who ordered French toast, but he meant to order waffles? I got him confused. <laughs> 
Oh, what about the people like when the server brings you more coffee, but then doesn't tell you that it's not free refills. So you spent like $16 on coffee. Oh my God. That's happened to me. I hate (laughs) that. It's happened to me too. I'm like, Oh God, a cup of coffee is $4. I wish I'd known that. (laughs) Yeah. Just the asshole for charging coffee by the cup. Come on. It costs you nothing. Yeah. I literally know it costs you pennies on the dollar. Pennies. You're fleecing us. Yeah. All right, guys, here it is. The big juicer, the juice extraordinaire, the Jamba Juice, the Orange Julius, A-I-T-A. Oh, by the way, guys, please rate, review, and subscribe. Yeah. Give us five stars on iTunes. We got another really nice review uh, recently, which you love to see. We simply do. Um, You can also join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Bi-weekly happy hours. Zoom. What is our chat, Sarah? WhatsApp. Yes, I'm new to WhatsApp, WhatsApp chat. Oh yeah, I got Danny on WhatsApp. Can you guys believe it? The WhatsApp <laughs> people say you not say what's up. You say WhatsApp. Now I sound like a dad. I was gonna say it's very nineties. Very nineties. <laughs> so WhatsApp is good. And it, but Sarah, it's owned by Mark Zucks. But you told me it's end to end encrypted. So yeah. Mark Zucky can't read my my messages. Allegedly, I mean you could use Signal, but I don't, I don't trust that Zucks. I mean, I don't trust him either, but it is allegedly end to end encrypted. So, yeah. yeah, I bet you. Zuck's I'm honestly is in like, there. whatever. Like, what am I doing on there? I'm talking about it. Am I the asshole? It's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, he can he can read it if he really wants. Right. If you're listening to this, rate, review, subscribe, Mark Zuckerberg. Join our Patreon. Yeah, Ed Zuckerberg, <laughs> like, give us the twenty five dollar tier. I know, right? We know you can afford. That's your it. toilet paper, please. Not even. That's like the wrapping. <laughs> that is toilet paper's wrapping. <laughs> AITA for not telling the couple I slept with about my genetic disability. We're revisiting those people because we've been chewing on it for so long. So long. <laughs> Let me first ask y'all to leave your kink shaming at the door. I got enough from the first layer I talked to. We're leaving at the door, Sarah. Is that right? Yeah, I don't have a problem with threesomes. Hey, we already did the the poly. We're cool with it. I incur- good, good for you if that's what you want to do. This isn't lewd erotica, so I'll keep this simple. I was born with a genetic disability. <laughs> By the way, people, we have looked this up multiple times. We're not able to figure out what this genetic disability mm. is. So if you got a guess, let us know. You can't tell them from looking at me, but it was very challenging growing up. So much so, I vowed to never have kids. I bet you see where this is going. A few years back, I met a couple on OK Cupes that were looking for a third. They swore to me up and down that the girlfriend was on birth and birth control. We all exchange recent STD results and the rest is an exercise left to the reader. I love this Opie in their narration. That's they're a great just like line. Cutting the bullshit. Right. And they're not like long time lurker, first time poster, title sounds bad, but hear me out. Well, and they didn't go into their kink and go all into yeah, it. Give care. us unnecessary like R slash I've had sex kind of details. Exactly. exactly. Like, I, love I love this. I love this. We get it. No, it's, it's good. It's good. We meet on and off for a few months until they went no contact. Happens all the time with couples. No big deal. That is until I get a phone call from them in July demanding that I give them five grand for my daughter's special homemade because money's tight. They muddled through an explanation of how we had an oopsie baby and the husband doesn't have the gene if 23 and me is to believe. So it must have come from me. I told them there wasn't a chance and blocked them on my cell and social media. Now I'm getting fake one day old accounts posting on my wall that I'm a deadbeat dad. And some of my supposed friends have responded asking for more info. I don't plan to pay up, but I wonder if all this could have been avoided if I told them, hey, just in case I have this shitty recessive gene or something, IDK, AITA, for not telling them. That is really interesting because at first my instinct was, well, you're entering into like a kink adult like sexual relationship communication is a big thing in those relationships yes. should be in all but you know like communication i feel especially is prioritized so it's like you definitely had the opportunity to bring that up yeah i mean when we've talked through this the question is did they have the opportunity yes could they have actually had the time of course did, right, so but it's, it's not a thing a where it's, killer. It's kind I know, of a but I guess I'm kind of like, well, it's not a thing where it's like, oh, I, you know, just it never came up. It felt weird to bring up. Like I think you, de- the opportunity was 100 percent there, but then I guess really the question is more: is the responsibility there? It does seem like something because the stakes are so high. I mean, by OP's own admission, the stakes are so high that they refuse to have kids ever. Right, but so, OP seems like they're doing fine. Well, I think they had a rough childhood. That's true. That's true. So 
you know, I don't understand when when the when the sort of result is so brutal and bad, and it does seem relatively low lift and low stakes to just be like, hey, I have a genetic disability. You don't you don't want to have my kids. Why not say it? But does it make mm-hmm. you an asshole to not say it? That I find to be a bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah, because it's kind of like it seemed as though they this couple did not want to have kids. And I guess I feel like if they felt that they if they had accidentally gotten pregnant, that they were going to have the kid. Yeah. Like, I almost feel like they should have told him. If that, that they, was on the table at all. Right. I don't understand why they didn't go to him sooner. That feels more like And also like when a you're crime. entering into a relationship where you're talking about birth control, I like completely understand that people change their minds. But also, you know, was there no inkling like, oh, well, if something happens, maybe we would like have the child. I don't know. Like, that's right. Kind of where were me. they really on that issue? Yeah. Did they know at all? Yeah. There was one theory that I think is pretty good that they actually might have been doing this on purpose and it's like maybe this guy was uh you know sterile or something couldn't have kids and so they thought well look this guy seems fine and people are weird as fuck yeah or, or it could happen. You know, it's a cheap way of getting a sperm donor or, right. or whatever I mean, people are weird as fuck because that's a weird as fuck thing to do so well, it's a little uh, assaultive is, is a word that was i definitely out. think so because right? stealthing is a form of sexual assault yeah, I don't take off a condom. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, a great point of why is this not stealthing? Well, stealthing actually changes the contact, right? Because yeah. you're saying we're having sex with a condom, then you're removing the condom. This is not that. No, it's not that. It does. I mean, if they had done this knowingly that they were duping someone, it's definitely. I mean, it's a violation for sure. It is, you know, and I think it's like the kind of thing where it's like, you know, this guy did not sign up to be a sperm donor. He just yeah. didn't. There's a legal process for that. There's a setup for that. So if that's what they were up to, they're instantly the assholes. So let's assume right. though, let's play it as it lays and assume yeah, yeah, yeah. they weren't up to that. Maybe she just got pregnant and they against abortion for whatever reason. Or they just changed their mind and decided to keep it. You know, we're, we're married, we're yep. in a stable couple and okay, we could do this. I think under that situation, I start to ask, well, why wouldn't they communicate with OP knowing very well that this could have been his child? This is what I think, because they didn't really give a fuck if it was his kid or not. They didn't expect it to be his kid. But now that the kid has a disability, now they're trying to point fingers and recoup right. some money. Right. I I think that's, I don't know, it almost feels, ab- it does feel kind of ableist to me. Like, I feel like if this kid was not born with a disability, would they be hunting around Right. For money, for paternity. Like, I kind of don't think so. Right. Right. Well, they would never know. Or maybe they didn't want to know either. They didn't want to test and find out. Right. Right. I mean, you can do all kinds of genetic testing nowadays. Like, right. Now, we were dinged here, and this is a great, uh, I, I actually think I omitted it because I, we used the term clean. This, this, this individual OP said clean. They, oh, they like had, STD free? Yeah. They had no, oh. and they used the word clean. And we got a great DM here. Okay. Um, we got a great DM from, I believe, uh, Dan is this person's name. Yes. Dan reached out. He said, Hey, I thought the app was great. The app with Andrea, 99% sex positive. Um, he said, however, using the word clean to describe being STI free is wrong. Okay. People with STIs are not dirty. They just have an infection. They need to get treated. Same as anyone with pink eye or the flu. There's a gross culture of shame around an infection that you get from sexual contact. It causes people to not pursue treatment, which just drives further infection. I'm gay. And there's an even bigger stigma around HIV in the community. People using the word clean to stand in for HIV negative, which is gross and unnecessarily stigmatizing. I was surprised given how sex positive Andrea was that she didn't bring up that clean is not the language to use around STIs. I thought it was worth discussing since I love the pod. Well, thank you for oh, loving yeah. the pod. Yeah. I mean, that's completely right. It, it does absolutely further the stigma and that's not a good thing to say. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just, it's not like you can literally just be like, have you tested negative for STDs or yeah. like STIs? 
Yes, no, it doesn't have to be like a sort of I'm asking you free judgment. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Like it's it can be it's it really doesn't have to be like that. So absolutely. Yeah, and I mean a lot of and and I spoke with Dan a little bit about herpes. You know, I was yeah. uh I was concerned that I could potentially get herpes and uh <laughs> and anyways, I don't have it, but you know, it's a very it's trivial. It really is trivial. It yeah. is a disease, I swear to God, what you catch when you catch herpes is stigma because it is just yeah. Like people get outbreaks, some get it less than even once a year, and an some outbreak, only get it once in their life. It's like it nothing. really, and I, like from just reading or just talking to people who've had it, it really just seems like a mildly annoying skin condition. But the stigma is worse than the actual condition. Seriously, seriously, yeah. I mean, that's a better way to describe it. People shouldn't say they have herpes; they should just be like, I have a mildly irritating recurrent I saw a condition. girl who I saw someone who have it um put it that way and I was like huh <laughs> you know it's true like I was just reading an article online and I was like that's real yeah it's completely ridiculous yeah. um so th- thanks to that submission and we and we love to hear any kind of um you know things we say that are wrong usually 99% of the time it's me but <laughs> you know happy this time Andrea got looped in as well <laughs> yes yes um, some comments here. Uh, Xavier de Renegade writes, YTA, why don't you get a vasectomy if you realize you didn't want to have kids? You're going to be on the hook for child support if this pregnancy is legit. I, I don't like know that that's true. I mean, I'm not a family attorney. That is true. You have to, you're, even though she's married. Yeah, like, that's your kid. Yeah, no, I don't think oh, yeah, there's any right. way around that. Well, I mean, I honestly, I would just like let a court decide that because. I think you, I don't know, like, where did they come up with this number from? I don't feel like they're going to go away. Right. If he just pays them off, I think it's just better to go through the court. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the question that I have is what are his responsibilities? Another kind of point we fixated on in the group was, you know, now he's kind of blocked them out of his life after learning he has a daughter, which is kind of understandable. But it's also I mean, like, yeah, he never wanted it. He never her. wanted her, but that's still his kid. There's, and he did engage in the baby making activity. And the fact that he didn't have a vasectomy, I actually think is a good point. I, I think a lot of women do talk about men taking more responsibility in the birth control realm. And, you know, I, I think a lot of I've heard women say stuff like, oh, it's reversible. It's it is reversible, but it's like not necessarily It's not like Michael Scott, where you want to be getting one and then undoing it and then getting out and doing it again. Like every right. time Jan changes her mind. Yeah, it's not exactly <laughs> a control Z situation. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the doctor's like, oopsies, I didn't undo. Right. Like <laughs> if you have a genetic disability, though, then I am like, yes. And you're doing, you know, engaging in, uh, you know. I, I guess I don't want to use the word promiscuous, but adventurous. It's like Can unprotected I say that? sex. Unprotected sex. That's it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Sex, you're like, right. It doesn't That's matter all it is. With. That's all it is. Yeah. But then like, why yeah, not? Yeah. I mean, I guess because I can fault the the couple for then not telling him from the beginning, because then at that point he could have revealed this and said, like, you may want to get some genetic testing done and like real genetic testing, not 23 and me. Yeah. So, you know, I can definitely fault them for that. I mean, it does seem a little weird that they just would never involve OP, even from a legal perspective. I think what they were what they were trying to do, playing it as it lays, is that they were trying to maintain the delusion or at least keep themselves from the information that this was potentially not. Yeah, or, they, you know, they, I'm sure they're also having unprotected sex as a married couple. So I think they are just right. like, well, it's just easier for us to believe that this is getting, you know, so. Right. That's why I just don't like it. It feels ableist. Top Reddit comment was, oh, I don't know what the top was, but Wowzers in my trousers five, which is a pretty good handle. <laughs> This is why you wrap it before you tap it. Hell, even with birth control and a condom, people can still end up with a bun in the oven. Lock down your social media accounts and contact a lawyer or some shit, I guess. ESH, you're an adult. Act like one. But they're not acting like adults either because they're making burner accounts to harass this guy. Right. Like, that's also not the proper avenue. (laughs) Well, and, and the thing with them, the thing I don't like about them, when I say, well, what's OP said? Okay, well, OP didn't tell them. I don't think that's enough to get him to asshole. 
I don't. I think it's it's something he, he Yeah, because if you're if you're going into this like consensual relationship with the expectation mm-hmm. that like nobody in here wants to have a child. Yes. Then I, I don't see why he would necessarily like have to say anything. And in fact, I'm now having this insight. Okay. If there was any potential for a child, that should have been brought up. If That's you, what I'm saying. They should have said something. Yep. They, if they were like, also, we don't believe in abortion, just so you know. Fine. Yeah. Or like whatever. Or just, you know, we've definitely thought about having kids and some, I like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Like we might, ha- we might have a kid in, in a so. I think that's a requirement to disclose. Yeah. Um, and they didn't disclose that. So then my charge against OP really, I, I don't know. Now I feel like I have very little. What, what did he do wrong? Yeah. He didn't tell them, but he shouldn't have had to tell them. It's not, if, a- it's like if they were all on the same page about not wanting to have a, a not, not wanting a child to result from this interaction, then I don't, really see why he would have to tell them right right seems irrelevant they only go to him when they want the money so they had no sense of like making him a parent or putting him in a parental role they don't they don't want him to be a parental role they want him to just be a cash cow (laughs) right like donor like they don't want him involved right they just want his money because now their child has a disability Right. And actually, that's making me think that OP's refusal to engage with the fact that he has a daughter is actually almost respectful of what the heirs that they're giving off, which is kind of like, we don't want you to be involved in the kid's yeah, life. The we request. just want the money. Yeah, that's fucked up. It's not the request. That's not the request. I think I've been brought back. I was actually wow. soft ESH on this, but now I think you've moved me back into. NTA. Yeah. I don't feel like I have enough on OP. I'm like worried I'm being hypocritical because I feel like we deal with so many accidental pregnancy situations. But like, I don't know. I guess in those situations, I'm still like, you can't just name a price on things and expect people to pay up. Like, you know, get an attorney, get someone to send a legal letter. Like, I don't know. Right. Like that's unfortunately, that's how you have to do it. I feel like you can't just like randomly hit people up. Absolutely. And that's what this feels like. Like if, if we just simply imagine if the only thing we change about the situation is that they're not hard up, then they would never have reached out to OP. So this is solely. Literally, he says it. It's not like that. That's, that's what gets, that's what gets me mad because their, their motivations are really not good. Their motivations are purely monetary. Yeah. And they're really only reaching out because they need the money. Yep. And they're just kind of seeing like who in their life they can hit up for money. Kind of. Yeah. And it's not OP's fault that this child happens to be expensive. That's their fault. They decided to proceed with this pregnancy. They did not tell OP. They're basically leveraging the fact that they didn't tell him. Now they're using that against him and saying, you owe us. And it's like, no, he doesn't owe you anything. Right. And it's like, if you really think he does, then, then you need to pursue that with the court, I think. Well, and he may very well lose in court. Yeah, but I then uh, but I, I wouldn't. The thing is, like, if someone wanted, if someone tried to, like, hit me up that way, I'd be like, OK, let's see what a court says. And I would only pay if I was, like, required to. Yeah. Damn, does that make me feel, uh, that, I don't know, it feels kind of heartless when I say it that way. But, like, I just don't trust these people. Well, they hit it. They hit it, you know. Yeah. And And honestly... Somebody posed in the group, well, what if it was just a woman? Let's just change it around. It was right, casual sex. It? Forget the other guy. And she hid the pregnancy from him and then only comes to him much later. I'm like, well, we're you didn't involve him with this child. You decided to have a child. Would right. Court- and that's your right. But then. Yeah, I guess. I it, guess like it is. is. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It and she doesn't right. have to involve them. But then like, I'm, I mean, I don't know. You have to go kind of go about things in a better way. If you're going to be like, hey, by the way, I had your child. And also now you have to pay me for it. Like hitting someone up with like an invoice is not going to yeah. go over well. Well, and I would say if a woman did that, I would say, for, first of all, I do think it's good that the law protects women like that. And, there, and not every law is perfect, right? Because yeah. the majority of the time, I don't think. It's a situation where she's hiding the fact that she's pregnant. It's him probably trying to run from his responsibility the vast majority of the time. Yeah. Or like, I I feel like we've seen these situations where like, oh, it was just a hookup as friends with benefits or something like you guys went your separate ways, no hard feelings or whatever. And then you realize you're pregnant. And if if you're already kind of on your own, like you might just decide to sort of do it on your own. But like having a kid is expensive. Right. 
But it, but but I'm saying though, <laughs> if this was a single woman, she yeah. hides the pregnancy from him, and then realizes, oh, this kid has a genetic disability, or I just don't have enough money to raise a kid on my own. And I would decide to be like, you owe me money. Yeah, even using the law, I would still be like, yeah, well, she's being an asshole. That's no way to have a child with someone. I mean, I guess that's true. Uh, I guess like if we were to just take the other husband out of the situation and like the approach was the same, I would still yeah. say like, well, that's not a great approach. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an assholeish approach. Yeah, yeah. It just is. Wow. Yeah, okay. like damn, have a conversation with someone and be like, so I got pregnant and I think the kid is yours and yeah. Wow. <laughs> Can't just be like, you owe me $5,000. <laughs> I guess I now I'm feeling weird because I, I feel like I got everyone to say ESH. On, I got the majority of people on the Patreon to say ESH Dang. and now I'm back in NTA. Well, honestly, the first time I read it, I was like, look, you definitely had ample opportunity to bring up this genetic condition. But then and so I was going to say ESH for that, too. And then I also feel like in similar situations, I'm always like, well, a man also has to be responsible for birth control. Like it's not just right. the woman's fault. But, it's, it's but then I'm like, is he the, I don't really feel like he's the asshole for adhering to the boundaries that they all collectively agree to. Like they right. all kind of collectively assumed the risk. The worst thing happened. They kind of cut him out from that whole process. Right. They cut him out. They cut him out and they only came knocking when they wanted cash. Yeah. It's not yeah. right. No, I don't think that's, I don't think they're the way that they did this is right at all. It's not right. Yeah. It's like, surprise, you're fucked. I <laughs> like, no. Yeah. You know? No. Well, I think, I think right. there's... And, and what, I don't know, what's really getting me is just the impression that if their child was not disabled, they wouldn't have never contacted him again. Right. Yeah, there's something weird about that, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I don't know that I'm fully settled on this situation, <sighs> but once again, we have talked Rough. it to death. It's one of those where I'm like, I'm glad this is not my life right now. Thank God. This is a terrible bind. I have moved again. I I don't know that I'm done. I know there are a lot of good. I feel like. What did you say with Andrea again? Because I forgot. What did you guys say? I think with Andrea, we said everyone sucks here. Mm. I'm not sure. But. I mean, uh, he's definitely like, I don't want to say doofus, but like he's, he's definitely fucked up in this situation. Like he's, he's fucked up to get in this situation. He's made mistakes. He's made mistakes. Exactly. Sure. But everyone makes mistakes. I just don't think he's been an asshole. I think at this point I've again switched to AITA for not telling the couple I slept with about my genetic disability, NTA, and they are. Yeah. I'm curious though, people, if you got us, come, come for us. I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah. I feel like honestly, I, I won't, definitely won't be offended if someone has a and like more more takes i'm almost like if do we need to get this like in writing takes. we need to make a chart of this situation yeah. it's really complicated <laughs> like seriously like a web yeah seriously all right we're gonna wrap here on a listener submission aita telling my goddaughter's father to go find a job after he asked if i could give his daughter a stroller bag I serve as the godmother of my former best friend's daughter. Every Christmas of the five straight years, I never failed to give my do- goddaughter a gift. As my goddaughter was starting school, I decided to gift her a backpack. As early as October, I was able to buy the school bag that I'm gifting my goddaughter. Not the cheap kind, mind you. Then, <laughs> out of the blue, my goddaughter's father messaged me. I don't consider him a friend, nor are we close. He asked, what will I be giving his daughter for Christmas? I told him I already bought the gift. It was a bag. He then asked if I could buy his daughter a stroller bag, which is by far more expensive than a backpack, and that his daughter needs it so it would be convenient for his daughter to carry around her school stuff. I got so annoyed and triggered. I told him that he needs to get a job if he wants a stroller bag for his daughter. He got angry at me, and this has caused me and my best friend to part ways, as according to them, I was belittling him and that I was hurting his ego. Also, the father was only joking, and then I cannot take a joke. Oh, sure, Jan. I'm so fucking annoyed with that. No, I hate that shit. It's only... No, fuck that. But like, oh, if she'd done it, then it wouldn't have been a joke. Fuck you. I hate when people say it was that. It's not a joke. We'll go back to this. If the father feels that his daughter needs a stroller bag, why didn't he purchase one so he did not have to ask me? Also, gifting for Christmas is not an obligation. But why does he have to demand that? Am I the asshole for telling him to get a job? Okay, first, let me go on this joke rant. I fucking hate when people do this. I think there's never really a time when the it's just a joke. It's always some kind of manipulation is happening when people use this phrase. Okay, most common is probably guy some said something offensive. Yeah. Then you got you got your feelings hurt. The guy's like, oh, it's just a joke. Yeah. Okay, it's just a joke that I didn't like that hurt my feelings. So it was a thing you said that sucked. Yeah. So it's not an excuse. 
The other one <laughs> is, uh, this is almost the reverse. Someone will be like, I'm trying to think. It's almost like I'll, I'll get offended. I'll get offended. And then I'll say it was just a joke, right? Like Sarah, like tell me right now, like uh, like jokingly say I'm a I'm a bad podcaster or whatever. Ugh, Danny, you're the worst at podcasting. We all know this. Oh, actually, uh, I have a pretty popular podcast, um, and I'm really passionate about it. So then I have to be like, no, so then, I was kidding. Yeah, exactly. Then you'd be like, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's not that right. And then you're like, no, I was jokingly offended. Yeah, I know. I was just joking. It wasn't that serious? Well, then why the fuck did you have to bring us into this energy zone? Or as my therapist likes to say, energetic. Why did you bring us into an energetic? You never see the word energetic to just describe the quality of having energy. Never. It's an energetic. I don't even know if it's grammatical, but he uses it and I'm love on it. board. I love it. That's so funny. Um, Yeah, no, I fucking hate that. I feel like guys do that. I mean, everybody does it, but I feel like guys do, like stereotypically do it all the time where you're just like, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if like we had a threesome with your best friend and then you get pissed off and you're like, babe, calm down. It's just a joke. Like, oh, if I had done it, would it have been a joke? Fuck it. Right, like right. you weren't joking. Right. I, I hate that. So yeah, I hate them for that. That's bullshit. Your request just didn't land and you should own that. Um... Completely rude request. I, I think it's like upsizing a gift. It's like, what do you do? I think it's rude. I mean, I'm not, like I, the only time I think that's acceptable is if someone is literally like, hey, so what do you want for Christmas? I was thinking of getting you this. Yeah. And then you could say like, oh, actually, like I already have that. Like I would so love this. Right. But I mean, that's really it. I don't I don't feel like that's it. I think you're like you just have to be tactful and just get a gift receipt. Right. Like, I think asking for a gift receipt or asking for cash is more reasonable, asking for a type of gift, but trying to kind of upsell the gift or be specific about yeah. the gift, that starts to get pretty rude. Whereas, also, why is a, a school age kid using a stroller bag? I didn't bag? get that either. I, I don't know what a stroller bag is. I assume it's a bag for a stroller. Yeah. I don't know. Weird. But I, I guess my thought is like, I, you, you know, live. and I've read stuff like this from comics and stuff who are hard up, and it's like, yeah, they don't want a gift. They want cash because, like, that's what it comes back to. And, like, I, I don't think that's rude to be like, hey, you know, honestly, uh, I don't need a, a nice wine stopper. I actually just really need $30, you know? Right. I don't think that's so rude. And I think, you know, uh, as I've been known to say, money is real. So, like, you, <laughs> I think it's all you got to be understanding if someone says something like that to you, even though it can feel a little transactional. Nobody right. who's in a good place financially is making a request like that. That's not an upsell, though. Asking for more, I think, is gross. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I was trying to Google image stroller bag. I've really gotten it nowhere. All I'm seeing is bags that attach to strollers. Really? So I'm like, who is this stroller even a gift bag. for? I'm is confused. it a wheelie bag? Oh, I guess maybe that could be it, like the thing I take to the grocery store. But no kid should have that. You're going to get bullied relentlessly. Yeah. That's a bad. No, that's not I, a bad I was a big wheelie bag kid. I mean, it took a lot of strain off my back. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What it, well, I'm seeing some huge fucking stroller bags here. I yeah. don't know how much how many books this kid has. No, just don't get the kid a wheelie bag. They're going to get bullied. But also, I, I do feel like I think their request was pretty rude i also think like op's reaction was a little over the top she even says i got so annoyed and triggered like you could just be like no <laughs> or you could like she immediately goes from you need to get a job like she immediately is like insulting his ability to provide for his kid and and why interesting Interesting. Yeah, it is. I don't know, Sarah. It's pretty entitled, though. It is entitled to ask. It's super entitled. But I guess I just feel I like there are if... other ways to just shut down that request. Like, this is just rude. Also, I'm assuming he's unemployed. Like, that's implied, but we don't know the details. I don't know. It's pretty slimy. What of him? This is okay. Let's let's get this clear. This is the godmother of best friend's daughter okay so the daughter and her are presumably roughly the yeah. same age so we'll just say 35 then the goddaughter's father oh i guess that's her okay that's her peer i was thinking of this as the best friend's father i don't know sarah it's just so gross it's so rude and gross and entitled it is yeah but i also kind of think that her reaction was rude because this is her best friend's husband 
and he is making an insane request, but why do you go straight to the jugular? That's true. She really does kind of fly off. I mean, she admits it herself it may- that she got annoyed and triggered. Why, yeah. why is this triggering for you? You're right. It's a it little- clearly is triggering because she went zero to 100. Like when I get annoyed, I don't immediately like insult someone like someone's lack of uh, employment, you know? Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Why is this triggering for her? Yeah. Like you could just say like, oh, I already bought it. Or you could say like a number of, in my opinion, snarky things about the specific the request. You know what I yeah. mean? Not like get a job. Yeah. You don't need to take any shots at the other person. Shots. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Just, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's yeah. all you had to say. No. Yeah. No is the answer to that. Right. That's a good point. Does it make her an asshole? I guess I'm slightly on her side, but it honestly is a big difference. He said something fucking rude and socially inept, but it wasn't a personal attack. It was just being right. a choosing beggar, which is obnoxious. Yes, it was being a choosing but beggar. But then she actually pulled out a straight up bazooka and was like, you're a fucking loser, basically. Yeah, like she really just personally, she took like a rude thing that's... Just like a rude, like social convention violation and turned it into a personal attack. You know, we did a situation that was similar to this recently. Didn't we do that on the Patreon with the woman who like kept coming for the husband's brother? Brother in law and kept saying, like, oh, he's always on drugs and drinking. And then, but she oh, didn't yeah. list. They were like, what he actually did was like nothing. Yeah, he brought over a six pack and didn't personally offer her a beer. It's very judgmental. Yeah. It's very, that's where this feels like it lives. Cause like what he did is obviously wrong, but I don't even know if it makes him an asshole. It makes him inept and it was, it was rude, but it wasn't a personal attack in any way. It wasn't personal. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would give like a, a YTA if like, if her response was normal, like I would say, or, you know, I would say the husband was the asshole for that request. Not the asshole is in you're a bad person, but you're the asshole is in like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. And like, you need to know. And and if yeah. our, our method of transmitting that knowledge to you is with the hear the asshole verdict, then so be it. Yeah. So wait, where are you on this? Do we I agree? Mean, AITA for telling my goddaughter's father to go find a job after he asked if I could give his daughter a stroller bag. I'm going to say, yes, you are the asshole. Ooh, I mean, I was going to say ESH. I just feel like it was very different. What he did is inept. It was yeah. rude. It was entitled. And OP, maybe the fact that you're, maybe there's a thanklessness happening here. And, uh, and I honestly, I, I do, this is very generous. I have never gotten a gift from my, I don't even know who my godmother is. <laughs> uh, and I know my godfather, well, I mean, he, he got me a good deal on my, uh, my fucking wisdom teeth surgery. Uh, but otherwise I don't think nice. he's ever given me anything really. I well, mean, I don't care. I love him. I don't give a fuck. Well, I I guess I can come for him because he just messaged her out of the blue asking what she's getting his daughter for Christmas. That is weird. So it's like you're already coming in with an ask for something that is a gift. It's never it should never be assumed That's or taken true. for granted. I liked um who said this? Athena M said ESH, he sucks for being greedy, but holy cow, you sound condescending. You could have reprimanded him without sounding like you're belittling him. Yeah. So I I can honestly like get on board with that. It feels kind of clean. Yeah. All right, I'll meet you there. ATA telling my goddaughter's father to go find a job after he asked if I could go have, give his daughter sore bag. We agree, ESH. OP, I think OP is angry. Because there's a thanklessness happening. Yeah, clearly. She's giving a lot. Yeah, feeling taken for granted. And now you're going off. But don't attack this guy. Yep. Don't attack him. That's not that's not nice. Yep. Thanks for submitting though. Yeah. And uh and submit again and we'll find you not the asshole we promise. <laughs> Guys, please rate, review, and subscribe. Uh join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. We got a virtual happy hour. Next one is may the 11th i'm Woo. dropping a couple new games i came up with lots of fun very fun night we were on for almost i think we we're on for over three hours and people were Holy still smokes. chilling I, I was just like guys i'm exhausted uh. um so it's a lot of fun all right we're gonna wrap up here asshole advocate of the mansplainer we're going to defend <laughs> the indefensible gonna try the mansplainer we are going to try uh, what if he <laughs> literally wrote the book on the subject? Let him have this. Right, right. He fucking wrote Grey's Anatomy. He is gray. He Let him talk. Gray. 
And Gray is a woman. Yes. Um, is Gray a woman? I mean, in the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, he can't help it that he's a man. He happens to need to explain something. Whoa. I don't know about that one, Sarah. <laughs> I, a, I feel a little attacked. I don't attacked, know how to personally. defend this. <laughs> well, what if, what if she was uh, an anti-vaxxer? Then maybe it's good that he's kind of yes. overly explaining this to her because she's a threat to our society. That could be good. Um, this is a really hard one. <laughs> yes, you need to do this, Sarah. You need to feel the mansplainer. What if this is all he has? You know what I mean? Oh. Like some guys, and I know guys like this, all they have are their little facts. You know, they don't oh have a God. lot of charisma. They don't know how to be funny or fun, but they've got their little World War II story and their little crazy facts. Oh well, if that's the case, then he probably doesn't even realize he's mansplaining. He thinks that he is just... I don't know, making everyone smarter by giving them more knowledge. Right, right. Knowledge, wink, yeah. wink. <laughs> this irrelevant histo historical trivia. Right. <laughs> Did you know? About like Winston Churchill. Uh, yes, I yeah. just came for my dad. <laughs> yeah, there's 747 different bolts in the <laughs> aircraft carrier. Oh my God. What if he's like the that OP's boyfriend in the other situation where like, just nobody lets him talk for that oh, long. Oh, no. That guy <laughs> makes me so sad. I know. Nobody listens to him. <laughs> I need a mansplain to you because nobody listens to me anymore. Yep. You've become one of those guys. <laughs> um, what if it's his first day outside after the coronavirus? Yeah. And he's just we'll unchecked. It. We got to let that one go. Yeah, we got to let that one go. He um, recently just had a vocal cord operation, so he's got to warm those puppies up. Oh, yeah. Fresh folks. <laughs> he's like, damn, these puppies still work. <laughs> what if um, she's a beautiful car salesman and he just can't contain <laughs> himself? That's a deep cut. Oh, God. The fucking car salesman. Yes, that is a very deep cut. I hope that you have a hot car salesperson when you go buy a car in LA and you can report back to us. Hey, that's why I'm bringing my mom and dad. I'm going to be like, mom, <laughs> is this a good buy? Are you, you're not, you're not into You'll be her. like, I will not succumb to your feminine wiles in front of my mom. Oh, I love a feminine wile. <laughs> you never hear about a masculine wile. Yeah, you don't. What is a while? I don't even know. I just heard the term. The guy who mansplains while. Thank you for mansplaining. We were curious. Yeah, because we don't actually know. What the fuck is a while? <laughs> W-I-L-E, right? It's not like a, a or maybe a why. I don't know. Devious or cunning stratagems oh, employed shit. in manipulating or persuading someone oh. to do what one wants. Wow. Oh, so this is a sexist term. Damn. I thought it just meant like charms. I guess. Wow. This is, can I just say like, was the fucking dictionary guy mansplaining when he wrote this? This yes. definition. I mean, cunning... everyone who does the dictionary is a mansplainer. That's true. Basically. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> the original. Daniel Webster. He's a mansplainer. <laughs> I was going to say uh oxford <laughs> uh, oxford yeah what's his name yeah devious or cunning stratagems are you on coke definition writer calm down yeah i mean adderall for sure good lord <laughs> i mean why don't you just say like clever tricks you psychopath yeah. well no because they're they're the dictionary so they have to like <laughs> yeah, seem the yeah. smartest <laughs> are you using a thesaurus to write a dictionary oh absolutely this is insane <laughs> otherwise like how do you avoid <laughs> defining a word using that word you need I a guess, thesaurus i guess <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is the app, and um, we love you. Rate, review, subscribe, patreon.com slash AITA pod, and we'll see you next Monday morning. Bye.